Hey everyone, it's Jason. This is a another Charmed and Dangerous, a Princess Adventure game uh, opening. Well, I already opened. I've sleeved everything. Um, this is me showing off the contents of the game. Uh, this is the Sharpened Crowns Booster Pack. Um, I got this with the Kickstarter. Um, I believe it will eventually hit retail. Um, because it has like a regular SKU number and everything. Um... But for now, yeah, just shuffle this into your dangerous deck. So it's extra dangerous cards. So you can currently buy the base base game. And you can check out all my other videos on these. The base game has uh, the four main four main princesses, uh, two villainous villains, and two villain decks, uh, the faux decks. Um, you can buy the expansion, which is the fairest in the land, which comes with two more princesses and another three villainesses and another uh faux deck like layer deck so if you buy them you have a bunch of options uh this expansion pack adds some more dangerous cards so if you only bought the regular expansion now you have some extra you know cool cards to go through so we're gonna look through those guys quick so they're all gonna have the uh, Charmed and Dangerous back. They just get shuffled right into your Dangerous deck. Add some more new cards. So we're going to look through all them. So right off the bat we have the Princess and the Pupper. So Popper. It's a Pupper. Um, play whenever you use a Charming. Instead of discarding... <coughs> excuse me. Instead of discarding after resolving the effect, pass the Charming to another player. It's a neat way to like recycle the charmings. We have Swift Parry. Play any time to negate the effects of a revealed layer of fortification or master stroke. Then discard the layer of fortification or master stroke. Uh, that could definitely save you. Got two of those. We have one of the coolest cards in the game now. I'm super glad they made this one. Uh, Defy the Reaper. Um, with Briar Rosa there. You may play this card anytime a princess falls in battle. Instead of losing the game, discard any full cards equipped to the fallen princesses. And her player draws a hand, a five, a new hand, a new five card hand. Um, I love that because it's like this game seems kind of like stacked against you to begin with. Um, so it's nice that it's like if one of the playing a four player game, if one of the four people die or get KO'd. Um, you lose the game, so it's nice that they add it. I mean, granted, if you're adding two cards to, like, a 30-card deck, it's going to be hard to make sure you have that. But still, that's pretty neat. Uh, we have a Rainbow Charger. When Rainbow Charger is played, you may immediately succeed at your current foe challenge. We have one with the dead. Take any three cards not named one with the dead from the dangerous discard pile and add them to your hand. We have the Inkwell Sword. Uh, the Inkwell is played. Discard all layer fortification and master strokes that have been collected. In addition, you may discard your hand to force the villainous to reveal herself. So it kind of like helps eliminate some of the lost conditions and helps get you closer to victory. That's why they only give you one. Uh, Dorothy Gale here with our Cyclone Strike. Discard all face-up cards in the full grid. The forces of evil do not bolster their next turn numbers during their next turn. Uh, Rally the Fae. Choose any five cards from the dangerous discard pile and shuffle them back into the dangerous deck. Great way to get cards like that Inkwell or the deck, uh, the Undead one, back into play. And then finally, we have the Battle Raccoon. Gain two uh, Diamond Facet for each princess who assisted in squad challenge this turn. So that was the uh, quick Sharpened Crown 16 card pack. Uh, the other thing I want to show off in this video is they sent with uh, with the Kickstarter, they sent a bunch of extra cards. Um, so these are the four princesses. They're from the base game. Um, you might ask why I got extra cards. Because I ordered the special premium foil edition. And, for example, I have a foil here. 
foil cards will look really cool. Um, but they can be kind of a... You can't really see the picture as well and everything. So if you buy the regular base game, you're going to get these versions here without the foil. So it's awesome that I now have regular versions as well. Um, they have the same exact abilities and everything. Like the regular ones did. So I just got an extra set of the four main princesses. Um, as well as the two villainesses. The villainesses is where it really made a difference. Um, because the foil villainesses, it can be hard to read the text. So the regular princesses, it's just a picture. But it was kind of hard to read some of these abilities with the spoil. Uh, like the back's not an issue. Um, so I'm really happy about that. Um, downside for me is I bought the expansion as the premium edition as well. So now I gotta um, go out and get a second set of the expansion or wait until they release these cards by themselves. So I can get the expansion characters in their non-foil versions. But they're still playable. It's not hurt, like, it's not like I can't play the game. Um, so there's that. Now, the other cool thing they did is they had some con exclusives originally that they sent out to everybody. So they're alternate artwork. Oh, we'll just look at the main four for right now. Alternate artwork of the main, uh, princesses. Which in itself would be fine. I would be more than happy just having some cool alternate artwork. But what's also neat, it's like we got the two Snow Whites. They have the same facet abilities, but they have different regular abilities. And that's what makes this awesome. So the Snow White from the base set has the Poison Arrow and Ferris in the Land. And I'll hold that there if you want to pause it and read that quick. So, the new alt art one is a fearless sharpshooter. So, Fletched Rain. Once per turn, if you defeat a foe in a solo challenge, you may discard any number of charmings from your hand. Every charming you discard, she's one face down foe and discard it. So, basically, if you defeat one, she snipes one person and takes, takes them out, you can discard more to shoot a, a bunch up to any number of charmings you have to defeat a bunch more characters in one turn without even having to look at them or flip them over. So that's really cool. Next up we have base set Gregel, who's the candy barbarian. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then we have the new alt artwork, the Frenzy Jawbreaker. So there's your base set. She has a sugar rush. Let's you do extra... Extra Explore action. So her alt art one is Confectionary Rage. During a solo challenge, you may discard a Charming to give uh, Gregel plus 5 in any of her facets, starting or equipped. For this turn, at the end of the current, she is Cursed with Sleep. Uh, so basically, she can do one power move to try and take something out, but then she's going to lose an extra turn. So we have base set Briar Rosa, who's a dream necromancer. And then the alt art Spectral Soul Reaver. So here's your base set Sleep of the Dead, who can curse herself with sleep uh, to do some extra stuff. Or she has Final Embrace, discarding a Charming, then remove him from the game. Uh, then shuffle five cards from the dangerous deck back into the dangerous pile. She can recycle your discard pile. Like a good necromancer should. Dorothy Gale. We have the base set Weather Witch. And then we have Dorothy Gale, Good Witch of the South. So that's her alt artwork. And then her base set, she actually has two abilities. She has Over the Rainbow. Oh, no, just one ability. Just extra text. Uh, Over the Rainbow. Her new alt, alt form has Spectral Emerald Spectacles of Oz. Once per turn, you may discard a Charming. Look at any three face down foe cards without triggering their effect. Uh, Such so a good way to, like, uh, getting eye on, hey, team, I'm going to see what we need to take care of. There's that guy. Let's not flip him over yet. 
So that's kind of, that's pretty, pretty nifty. Alright, so then we also had, from the expansion, we had, and again, I only have the foil versions of these. We had Do Dokabi, Arcane Trickster. And then she actually gets Devious Huckster. And what's neat about this one is it's not alternate artwork like in the sense of the other ones, but it's the same outfit as her Goblin Queen. Just she has dark hair like she has in this one, but she has the same purple outfit. Uh, there's a couple little changes, but that's still pretty neat. Uh, just a different coloring picture. Um, so the expansion one has Magic Club. The alt one has Hidden Agenda. The copies facets and your hand are invisible to the villainous. On your turn, you may discard a charming from your hand to reveal one foe on the grid, then return a face down or place it at the bottom of the deck. So like for Dorothy could look at three cards and see what they are and put them back. She can only look at one, but she has the option of getting rid of it um, for a while. So that's pretty nifty in itself. And then the other princess we got is... We have a Cinderella. Uh, Cinderella, Divine Cleric. So it's her expansion version. And there's her um, alt version, which is the exact same artwork. So it's nothing... No new artwork for her. Because I did send an alternate artwork card as well. So actually now I have three different Cinderella's. So now she has... Uh, Divine Cleric. Benevolent Priestess. But she also gets Holy Avenger. So the base... Uh, the base expansion. Has Generous and Kind. Uh, lets you get extra cards. The same artwork... Alt card has Beseech. Anytime you may discard a Charming to allow any other player to draw three cards. Random. Cards. Okay, they put that weird. At any time you may discard a Charming to allow any other player to draw three random cards from the dangerous discard pile. They put a weird comma in there. Um, so I help out the other team. Um, and then her... Alt art version, the Holy Avenger, has Consecrate. At any time, <coughs> excuse me again. At any time, you may discard a Charming to ignore the reveal of a full Master Strike Stroke or Layer Fortification. Then all players may draw a card. So that's actually kind of cool too. Really helpful. Um, the very last card they sent me, which I had no idea I was even getting. Is a new villainous, which is Carbosa. Um, I kind of hope that either they release these all artwork packs to everybody, um, or they put this villain in like another set, even if that's different artwork or something. Because as much as I love Kickstarter stuff and I love myself getting exclusives, I also look at it from a collector's persp perspective. Trying to say point of view and mixed perspective at the same time. Is I feel like all artwork stuff, fine. I, it's fine if nobody can get it. But something like this is like, I feel bad that some people might not be able to get this particular card. Um, or some of the other characters. Because some of them abilities are really cool. Um, but it's what it is. Uh, name Day Curse. When Carbosa is revealed, remove her move. The Charming Discard Pile from the game. If the Charming... <coughs> if the new Charming Discard Pile ever reaches 15 or more, you lose the game. Masterstroke. All players discard one Charming or two cards. So, if she has a Discard Pile of Charmings, it's 15 or more, you lose the game. Um, and why it says new is because uninvited guests. Place a discarded Charmings in their own pile if there are 15 or more revealer. So once there's 15, she gets revealed. Then you flip her over, you remove that pile, and then if she gets 15 more, you lose the game. Um, so that's kind of cool. Uh, different effect for winning everything. Uh, so that is the end of my Charmed and Dangerous for now. Uh, hope the game kind of kicks off so they keep releasing more 
content. That would be awesome. I know that uh, during the Kickstarter, people were wondering, like, what about this character, like Ariel, or what about Mulan, or what about so-and-so? Just plenty of different princesses to tap. Um, maybe there's even a possibility at some point they might hit some of the princes. Um, which I'm fine with that. You know, throwing like an Aladdin. You know, I know he's not te technically a prince, but like he was the main character of that movie. But also, I think they kind of got to stick to uh, open domain sources. So, uh, yeah, check you guys later. Check out my other videos. Thanks, bye.